All right, guys, so I'm here to show you how to memorize your trig identities. Trig identities are very helpful in trig because they're required to memorize and you have to take um, a lot of quizzes on them. They're on the final and you have to take a big test on them. The problem with trig identities is a lot of students get um, discouraged because they find trig identities not that fun and they're kind of a puzzle and if you don't really know them the problems that are associated with them are really hard to do so i invented this thing called thomas's law which is an easy way to memorize 17 trig identities as long as you pay attention you should be able to do it quite easily it's not that hard to remember and there's very little things you need to remember so we're going to start the first step is just remembering what this order is so basically, as long as you write it as sine, cosecant, cosine, secant, tangent, cotangent, as long as you write it in this order, all the following parts are going to work. So this is basically the special order that you have to write it in, but um, already in trig and in probably geometry, you were writing it in this order because this is just the typical order that you write it in. So in case that you get kind of mixed up and you write it in a different order, try to get in this order. It's really useful. Part one is the reciprocal identities. The reciprocal identities are sometimes easy, but for some students, they're hard. And when you get to test day, you're having anxiety and you have stress, and sometimes you forget things. So the whole point of this video is to make sure you guys remember. So we're going to start off with reciprocal identities. And to do that, you're going to first, of course, write down the thing that I just told you how to do. So as long as you write in this order, it should work just fine. And then it's pretty simple from here. You're going to add... A fraction bar, you're going to put a 1 on top and say equals 2. So 1 over sine equals cosecant. Now, you're probably wondering, it couldn't be that easy, right? Well, it really is because it works for the other two also. So that's 3. But it gets a little bit better when you find out that that's 6 because you can do it the other way around. So you can say sine is 1 over cosecant, cosine is 1 over secant, and tangent is 1 over cotangent. Now, really what this reciprocal identity is trying to say and what makes it um, kind of hard for students to understand is that if you have, let's say, cosine on top of a fraction, what it's saying is you can move cosine to the bottom of the fraction. You just have to call it secant. So whenever you have any of the trig functions on a fraction, you can kind of move them freely and rearrange them in ways that line up for other um, trig identities, which makes things a lot easier. That's why these are on the front and are on the top of your trig list that you have to um, memorize, the one that they give you and they say memorize the left side. These are very vital. So what you need to remember, though, is... To, to do that little trick where I said you can move it to the other side of the fraction bar as long as you switch it, you need to remember that it needs to be a, a single term. And what that means is as long as it's not tangent of x plus 1 or tangent of x plus 2 or tangent of x plus cotangent of x, it has to be tangent of x multiplied. Like it has to be its own thing. Just like this right here is its own thing. So that is part one. That's reciprocal identities. So we're going to move on to part two. Part two is tangent and cotangent. These ones are pretty easy to remember with this law. So basically, let's start on the left side. So the special order I told you, copy down the left side. Now you should have a piece of paper out because this is kind of better if you have a piece of paper and you're working along with me. So you're just going to copy this down. And then the next step is pretty simple. What you're going to do is you're going to draw a fraction bar and you're going to put sine on top and cosine on the bottom and you're going to put an equal sign. So basically this says sine over cosine equals tangent. Now that is a very, very special identity because it comes from the unit circle, which they should have already had you memorize. So the unit circle is a giant circle, right? And then the y axis is sine and the x axis is cosine. So when they tell you and they make the little triangles within the circle, um, what you should remember is opposite over adjacent is hypotenuse. And that's exactly where this comes from. Opposite in those little triangles they draw in the circle is sine. And adjacent is cosine. Opposite over adjacent equals tangent. And tangent is the hypothesis. I'm sorry, not hypothesis. Hypotenuse in the triangles that they draw within the unit circle that lead you to things like the tangent of 42 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. 
Um, now what's fun is you can do it the other way. So you can say if you draw the other half of the special order, you can put cosecant over secant equals cotangent. Now what's important to remember here is that these are really closely related. If you remember the conversation we had from the slide before, you'd remember that I should be able to move secant up here and just call it cosine, and I should be able to move cosecant down here and just call it sine. So basically what I'm trying to say is that cosine over sine equals cotangent, and these are the same things right here. That's practically the same identity, it's just I wrote it with cosecant instead of sine, and I wrote it with secant instead of cosine. Now these ones on the outers are also the same thing, it's just sine, and those are flipped on the other side, which resembles exactly what the reciprocal identity is. So these ones are very closely related. This one right here on the left is the most important to remember because this is the one they ask you all the time. And basically one of the strategies for solving trig identities is to transfer everything into sine and cosine because a lot of things line up with sine and cosine. So if you can transfer everything into sine and cosine, most of the times you'll get a lot of sine over cosine and that very easily is changed into tangent. Also tangent can turn into sine and cosine if you need it the other way. That's the most important one. And if you memorize this one the most, if you memorize these two, with help from the reciprocal identities, you should be able to get to these two quite easily. So basically, these two are the same sets. Now part three is the important one. This is the one that a lot of people like to draw on top of their papers, so much so that my math teacher was like, where's this picture everybody keeps drawing? So this is the one that's probably gonna be the most useful because everybody struggles the most with Pythagorean identities. People say Pythagorean identity is really confusing because there's like nine of them and they're in crazy orders. And you're like, how am I supposed to remember that much? And it takes up like half the sheet for the ones you have to remember. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to write down that special order. Now, this is where the special order was created for me in my head because this is the only order it works in. And you're going to see something kind of funny. So the first thing you're going to do, because this is called Pac-Man, is you're going to draw Pac-Man. Now, I know this looks kind of funky. I'm no artist, but I mean... It gets the idea through. Basically, he's eating his time away. Get it? Seconds? No? Okay. So we're going to move on to... Uh, he eats little circles, And if you've ever seen Pac-Man. So you're going to circle sine and cosine, because instead of cosine and tangent, you're going to circle these two, because sine and cosines are like best buddies. They're always together. They do everything together. They're like best buddies, all right? Now, I know what you're saying. That's just a poor drawing. I don't understand how that's anything related to math. Well, don't worry. It gets worse. I drew a tongue. So... The tongue is important because it connects secant and tangent. Now, it's, it looks a little jumbled right now, and it looks like there's no kind of pattern to this. But now is where it starts getting really important. So listen up. So first, remember how to draw this, because you're going to really want to remember how to draw this. In fact, you might need to rewind the video in a second. But basically, you have sine and cosine together right here. So since they're like right next to each other, and they're like best friends, you're going to put a plus right there. Now we're going to move over to Pac-Man, and, you know, these two are kind of far apart, but they're connected in their little shape, right? So what you need to remember is you're going to put a minus here because they're far apart. And then the question is, do you put the arrow up or down? So you put the arrow down because water flows down. Now, that arrow does symbolize something, and we're going to show that in just a second, but let's get to the tongue real quick. Um, my math teacher doesn't like Pac-Man because he thinks that my whole thing's flawed because Pac-Man has a tongue, but I say to him that, you know, it's still valid. So anyway, secant, what you need to remember is you're going to put a minus here because they're far apart. They're not right next to each other like sine and cosine. And then tongue, it goes out. So now you have kind of a more messy drawing and you're wondering, this still isn't relating to anything, math. So here comes where the math comes in. <sighs> sine plus cosine equals one. So sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Cosecant minus cotangent, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals one. Secant squared minus tangent squared, secant squared minus tangent squared equals one. So basically that gets you three of the nine. I'll show you how to get the other three later, but we'll have a little conversation about what people forget when they learn Pac-Man and why it's not always a valid strategy for everybody. So people forget when they draw Pac-Man is they won't put these squares here and that completely makes it wrong. So you, if you're going to do this, just remember that you need these. So how you need to remember that is with the Pi Pythagorean, um, 
just the actual Pythagorean equation with just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's the same thing. You know, one squared is one, so they didn't really show that. But basically, whenever you have a Pythagorean identity, you're going to have squared. Um, and also, anytime you see a trig function squared, you should immediately think back to Pythagorean identities, because I'd say about 80% of the, 80 of the time, it's connected to this. That most of the time when they say squared, it's it's usually either like sine squared over sine, and then you'd simplify that to just sine, or it's going to be one of these. Now, that gets you three, but you're wondering, how do you get the other six? So these are the other six right here, and you're wondering, you know, how are those related? So you have the one right here. So to get this one right here, you just subtract cosine from both sides, and you get this one. To get this one, you just subtract sine. So minus sine squared of x, 1 minus sine squared of x, it's just algebra 1, you know? And then to do the next one, which is 1 cotangent squared equals cosecant, all you do is have to do um, cosecant squared equals 1, so you add cotangent squared to both sides, and you'd say cosecant squared equals 1 plus cotangent squared. And then you could do it the other way, and basically it trickles down, and you can get all 6. So how you want to effectively use this is anytime you see a squared and you say, you know what, I think that's part of the Pythagorean identity, you draw this, and you would find, let's say, it had a sine squared. So now I want to make all three of these. And then I kind of look at it, and I say, you know, it turns out to be this one, so then I'd convert that into, let's say, 1 minus cosine squared, and I'd move on with my big trick um, identity, and those get a little tedious at times, and sometimes you get to points where you get things like cotangent squared um, minus cosecant squared, so pretend these two are switched, like this is negative and these are positive. So what you need to remember there is, is that that is still the Pythagorean identity, it just has a negative 1 multiplied to it. So if you um, factor out a negative 1, you can still get this 1 here. So if you had this negative cosecant squared of x minus cotangent squared, I'm sorry, plus cotangent squared, if you had the opposite signs, then it just equals the opposite sign over here. So that would just equal negative 1. So if these had the opposite signs, if it was negative sine squared plus, or I'm sorry, minus, cosine squared, it would be negative 1, and if it was negative secant squared plus tangent squared, it would be negative 1. So if you just flip all the signs through, it's completely valid. So anytime you say, you know, it's still kind of close. Now what wouldn't be valid is if you had cosecant squared plus cotangent squared. That's none of these, and that gets a little confusing, and sometimes you need to use um, this thing twice to kind of put them together, and in that instance you might have something like 2 cosecant squared plus 1. So just watch out for this and make sure you draw it very these three very accurately because it's how you get the other six. So that's about it. So in conclusion, you learned really fast 17 identities. And the facts are is you were probably staring at that trick sheet and it took you a long time to memorize those identities. And sometimes you just have to use Quizlet. If this didn't work out for you, then you know what? You just got to stick with it. It's really about perseverance. Um, Things to remember is basically all you need to remember to do this is how to draw the special or how to draw Pac-Man and then how to do the special order. So the special order is sine on top of cosine on top of tangent. And the next to that is cosecant on top of secant on top of cotangent. And then to draw Pac-Man, you might want to rewind the video to go through it a little bit slower, you know, watch it a couple of times. Once you learn how to draw Pac-Man, I mean, it's really worth it to get all six identities. Um, and don't give up, you know. It's easy to, me or I'd say it's easier to memorize them than to actually do the problem. And I think that's where a lot of students get mistaken is they think the problems take a lot of skill, but really the problems take more persistence than they take skill. If you stick with it, you'll get it done because it's not necessarily about all this talent that people think certain people have. Like, oh, the top kid in the class got them all done. That kid still spent a lot of time doing it too. So anytime you have one of those and you're stumbling upon them, just remember, keep with it and you'll get it done. It's just a little puzzle and it does take some time. And even for everybody, it takes some time. I remember my math teacher, Mr. Yu, would tell me all the time, you know, you might bring in one of these homework problems and I might not even be able to do it. Some of these things are really hard, but we're just going to keep working through it and we're going to see if someone else did it. And it's just going to be a learning environment. And these, and what you also need to remember is when they give you ones on the tests and the quizzes, they're a lot more fair than the ones you get on the homework. The ones on the homework really stretch your um, 
and your ability to do them and they really teach you like real trick but when you get to the tests and the quizzes they're really nice to you and they give you fair ones and most of the time they replicate just parts of the ones you do on the homework so as long as you stick with the homework you listen in class and you don't give up you'll do really well on this quiz and test and especially if you know pac-man thank you